This guide might be influenced by a current event, but I also know people actually have been asking about him, so today we are going to cover Shulk. Not in Smash, not in Definitive Edition, but in Xenoblade 2. As you know, Shulk was brought in as a DLC guest character Blade to hype up Xenoblade 2 even more since he is the protagonist of the first game, and being the protagonist of the first game, you can be sure they made him a very good Blade. He is towards the top of A tier with a lot of very good aspects about him that make him a good Blade to use in almost every situation. This was the first time Xenoblade characters met each other, and fortunately now, not the last. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Shulk and Xenoblade 2, seeing what makes him so great, discussing all of his strengths and weaknesses, and looking at how to use him most effectively. If you enjoy this type of guide content, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much, and I would very much appreciate it, you lovely human beings. Or Hobbs. Let's get into it. So Shulk uses the iconic Minato as his weapon, which is a unique weapon exclusive to him. It is a clone weapon, meaning it uses the same animations as another weapon, and the weapon that the Minato is a clone of is the Shield Hammer. But do not fret. Shulk may technically be a reskin Shield Hammer, but he has gotten a significant amount of buffs to be much more viable than actual Shield Hammers. Firstly, his weapon has sped up auto attacks and animations by 20% by default. This doesn't take up any skill slot or anything. It is just an innate property of the weapon already, making him much faster than Shield Hammers. He also has lower art cooldown, so you can use arts much more often, and this fixes a lot of issues right off the bat. His arts also have much higher damage ratios, as you might expect, and the positives do not end there. An easier comparison comes on the stat page. Shulk can reach a gargantuan auto attack stat of 1974, which is by far the highest in the entire game, giving him some huge base damage that no other blade can match. He can also reach a max of 40% critical hit rate with the Moon Matter Core Chip, and actually has a decent block rate as well, making his damage easily outclass shield hammers. His physical and ether defense are both 20%, which is among the highest for offensive blades, and along with other abilities gives him some of the best defensive utility in the game. He comes with a 20% ether mod, which is the highest possible stat mod for a rare blade, and his cooldown is 4, which is about the average. Everything about him is already pretty promising, but his skills also make him a great team-wide support option, letting him excel in all areas, so let's take a look at those. Shulk's first skill is Monado Speed. This will increase accuracy and evasion of the entire party by 24% at level 1, rising up to 40% at level 5. This is a slightly weaker version of Foresight, but if you remember how good Foresight is, this is still an incredible skill. You will pretty much never have to worry about the accuracy with Shulk active in the party, and the evasion buff can be very beneficial for boosting agility of the team and actively dodging a number of attacks. It can also stack with Foresight to make your party truly unhittable and is all around an amazing skill. The party support doesn't end there though, as his second skill is Monado Enchant. This will boost the damage of the party by 20% at max affinity at level 1, rising up to 40% at level 5. This is once again a weaker version of the same skill that other blades have, but only Shulk has both a damage boost and an accuracy and evasion boost, establishing his niece as an effective party support blade who can also do some nice damage on his own. A 40% damage boost may not seem like much, but it can be helpful for boosting the damage of blades who don't have any additives, and it still functions as an effective 120% total damage increase across all three party members, which isn't bad at all. It can be stacked with other damage boosting passives as well to bring out the potential of the team more, and the 40% still helps Shulk as well. Shulk's final skill is Vision. The central mechanic of the first game makes a return. All this skill does is guarantee an attack misses you, effectively negating it. It has a 100 second cooldown at level 1, and a 60 second cooldown at level 5. Vision will only activate and if attack will kill you if it manages to hit, so it will not be wasted. You will have to land a button prompt, but it's very easy, so that should not be an issue. This is a good skill, honestly, not just for making you immune to one dangerous attack that can kill you once every 60 seconds, but the defensive utility of this really cannot be understated. All three of Shulk's skills overall make him one of the best party support blades, while also being a blade who can dish out some impressive damage himself. All three are great skills too. Now let's take a look at his specials to see if this greatness continues. Shulk's level 1 special is Monado Purge. This is an ether based single hit attack with a slightly above average damage ratio. 330 at level 1, 490 at level 5, and 528 at max affinity. It has decent speed as well, but no AoE and no special modifiers. It might not seem that great at first glance, but it comes with a completely unique effect which is purging or removing enemy awakening status. Do note that this is not the same as Enrage, which is a different effect where enemies get their own unique buffs and traits, usually when you reduce enough of their health. Awakening is a challenge mode exclusive buff, which many of the dangerous super bosses have. 
Basically, when you put an element orb on one of these enemies, there is a 50% chance they will awaken and gain increased damage and lowered cooldowns. It can be very dangerous, and the only way to remove it is by breaking all the orbs in a chain attack, or by purging it with a special. That means the special has a very niche and specific use, and is not too good outside of that, but it can be very useful during those specific situations. It synergizes pretty well with Shulk's identity in this game. Shulk's level 2 special is Minato Cyclone. Now this is more like it as far as damage specials go. It has a very high damage ratio of 480 at level 1, 640 at level 5, and 696 at max affinity. It's 5 hits total, and it has a 25% critical hit modifier. It also has a nice area of effect, and it's also very fast. It even has the best possible bonus effect of increasing critical damage by 85%. This is easily one of the best level 2 specials in the game, and a great special for chain attacks because of how powerful and fast it is, along with a pretty decent amount of hits at 5, making it easy to hit 5 million damage in the right situations. I definitely recommend using this special for damage as much as you can. Shulk's level 3 special is Minato Buster. This is another single hit ether based special, but it is quite a bit more powerful. For one, it has a 50% critical hit modifier, making it very common to get critical hits with. And secondly, it has a high damage ratio of 625 at level 1, 820 at level 5, and 850 at max affinity. It has the ability to pierce enemy defense entirely, making sure it always does the full amount of damage. Its bonus effect is piercing guard as well, so block rate is not a factor either. It can be a very powerful single hit when combined with Shulk's already high base damage. It's not very good in chains, but most chains don't get to round 3 anyway, and it's plenty useful as a damage option outside of that. Definitely something you can recommend using. Shulk's level 4 special is Minato Unbound. It is a very powerful level 4, having a damage ratio of 1400, which is top 5 in the entire game, along with the pierce effect, meaning it goes through all defense, and the same bonus effect as level 3 of Nulling Guard completely. This means you can always do some crazy damage with this special, and since it will freeze, break, and topple, you can set up easy fusion combos with it despite the long animation. It's an absurdly powerful level 4 special, and definitely one of your main damage options as Shulk. All in all, with the exception of his niche level 1, his specials are very good for damage and all of them are good options to use. Shulk really doesn't have many negative aspects to him at all and is easy to fit on many teams. For setup, I am running the Tachyon chip on him because this gives him the amazing bonus effect of 25% extra critical damage, which is more than makes up for the 13% drop in critical hit rate. This can make Shulk's critical hits hurt even harder, and I absolutely recommend it. For Aux cores, Affinity Max Attack and Outdoor or Indoor Attack Up are must because they are just great for damage boosting Aux cores, and Shulk doesn't actually have that many added to damage increases. The final slot is usually specific to the enemy you're fighting. Affinity Max Evade can be a very good option in general to boost evasion more, but I'm running Affinity or Spike Defense right now because of very specific enemies I'm fighting against. More damage is always good as well, so something like Titan Hunter or something can be very useful. For accessories, the Crimson Headband is a must for increasing critical damage even further, which is definitely something Shulk likes a lot. I am also running an Abyss Mass, which gives a huge damage increase, but seems to be a bit scary with the side effect of increasing damage taken by 55%. However, thanks to Minato's speed buffing agility and evasion, along with vision blocking at least one dangerous attack every minute, I think Shulk is one of the best options for this item. The final slot is going to help out with that even more, being Dauntless Boots to boost my agility. Morag's Common Blades are agility mod katanas as well, so I can reach over 700 agility with her on Shulk, so she becomes very difficult to hit with Minato's speed and can focus on dealing as much damage as possible. For pouch items, Art Recharge is just as good as it always is and is the best option for Shulk overall. With all that done, let's take a look at how to use Shulk practically. So in this video I decided to tackle the hardest challenge in the game by a technical sense, which is gonna be the 9th Imperial Armor Division Challenge. It's only on normal mode though, I'm not, I'm not crazy enough to do Bring Your Chaos right now. Although in the past Shulk on Morag actually was used in that challenge. So. One thing to note about Ardanian Kuradal is that when he enrages, he will get 80% ether damage reduction. This is straight up damage reduction, so even pierce effects don't go through it, unfortunately. So this can make him a lot tankier than he might be otherwise. This version of Kuradal is much, much more threatening than the Super Boss version that you just see in the base game, who can just go down in like one minute to like anyone if you know what you're doing. Much tankier, he's much more dangerous as far as attacks and everything like that. So. The good thing about this, though, is that Shulk is very good against him because you have the ability to just make sure you can avoid all his really dangerous attacks with uh, Minato Vision. When with Vision, 
Or Minato speed and with vision, I should say. And when you give him the Elemental Awakening status, you have Shulk's level 1 and just get rid of that as fast as you can. The one thing you can do in this fight is that he enrages like every like 15 seconds or so, but he also has a bit of a cooldown period, so when that enrage expires, if you can get like a driver combo on him, he can't enrage again instantly and you'll be able to um, get a lot of extra damage on him if you can time your attacks during that period of time. Right now, my general strategy is just using the um, level 2 specials a lot. Minato's Cyclone's really good, as you might see. He was not enraged very temporarily there for a moment, so I was able to get a big chunk of damage on him with the Minato Cyclone. And I'm going to purge the Awakening status right here, so he's no longer getting the extra cooldowns and extra damage on me. And Phase 3 is going to start. This is another thing that makes this fight difficult. It's because these enemies spawn in and they can be really dangerous. The Sniper, in particular, does a lot of damage and he's all the way off, off in the corner, and he can lower your party meter. So I'm just going to walk all the way over here to get rid of him as soon as possible. And from there, I'm just going to tackle the other enemies, because my allies can hopefully handle the Kirtle right now while I'm just um, avoiding all the attack with the current agility value I have. And with visions if we need it. That's kind of the general plan right here. Rely on Shulk's Monado speed and my agility right now to just act as an effective tank while all these enemies are spawned in. And... My only real source of healing right now is basically the health potions that drop from Driver Combo and Curadil, so we gotta make sure we're getting those Driver Combos as much as we can. That's another reason that Tor just worked really well with everyone, because of his amazing break art with Cutie Pie. Shulk himself has a topple art on Morag and a topple plus art, so you can get some really good damage out of Still Brand and Echo Edge with that. Dagas is the other party member just boosting Shulk to damage even further since he doesn't have huge amounts of additives, so this can be very beneficial for boosting his damage as much as possible. And we're not going to have too bad of a time here with this, thankfully. Now, my party meter just got sealed up, so i got to kill these musses to make sure we have that. And once again, it's going to be the same thing where my allies focus on Kuradil, and I'm just going to kill these enemies pretty quickly here. You can see just how useful Shulk's utility has come in. I'm We would have easily been dead if we didn't have the agility to survive a lot of these attacks, and Shulk's damage on its own is really good for just taking out enemies while being defensive at the same time. He's much more effective than any traditional shield hammer, and... He works very well on Morag being a Shield Hammer clone and having access to that really good top alert. You can also use him on Zeke. He has a good loan chart on Zeke. Um, honestly, he works pretty well on everyone just because of the fast animations. He can even help out Mia and um, Rex a decent amount, although I don't really recommend using Shulk on either of them. So at this point, what I would like to do is get a level 4 special off while he is not enraged so we can get like a big chunk of damage, maybe a fusion combo with it. Now that's going to be the strategy here. I've taken out all the enemies. We just got to kill Kuridal at this point. I'm going to go for the topple. And then I'm going to try to time my level 4 as soon as that enrage ends. So we're going to get a big chunk of damage here. And the Photon's going to be taking for a lot of damage over time on him as well. Which is going to be very nice. So just with the Photon, which isn't the most powerful damage over time effect, we get 65,000, which is not bad at all, honestly, just for the damage over time effect here. And the driver combos we do will hopefully increase the duration of Photon further so we can get a more damage overall on that. I'm going to wait to use Gamma Ray just for that reason, because I want to get um, some extra damage on him with this. And then in a little bit, we're going to finish him off with a Chain Attack. I could probably do this now, like as soon as the Enrage expires, just because the, the damage you have with um, Monado Cyclone and Poppy can be enough to actually finish him off, but I was playing it a bit safer here, and you get to see more of the fight and how useful Vision can be and how useful Shulk's Evasion is. As you can see, I've been avoiding basically every attack. Um, ironically, as I said that, I got hit by both those auto attacks, but that's not a huge deal. Not a huge deal at all. So I'll go ahead and use level 2 here. All these Twin Bear auto cannon procs are completely missing on me. We've got the, um, we're just going to build up to our level 3 now. I don't think I actually end up getting to use it, because he's going to troll me with an Ultra Annihilation Flare, and I'm going to have to block that with Tor's level 3, but I ended up, I ended up with a chain attack right afterwards, if I remember correctly. So yeah, even the hardest challenges you can easily beat with Shulk. He's built for challenge mode in a way, being able to purge the Awakening status, just having a lot of really good defensive utility options. Shulk is made for challenge mode, and I think that's one of the things I was able to show off with uh, doing this hardest challenge here. So like I said, I, I'm able to block the, um, the Ultra Annihilation player with that. Unfortunately, it was invincible during that, so I did no damage with Tora, but that's not a huge deal. I easily have the damage to kill him here. I could have definitely chain attacked earlier, even with only one orb. Like, Cutie Pie, Shulk, level 2, you're going to see he's going to be able to do a damage cap after this. And yeah, he's going to go down very, very easily. 
This is one of the reasons Shulk's level 2 is so good for chain attacks. Even without any kind of fusion combo, you can damage cap all 5 hits if you get the critical hits, because it's just such a powerful special in general. His other specials aren't great for chain attacks, but just having Shulk along, along for the level 2 can be very beneficial. You can see those easy damage caps right there until he blocks the last 2 attacks. That's not a big deal. So yeah, that was the 9th Imperial Armor Division on Bringer Chaos. Right now I want to show off Shulk's synergy with Mithra. So combining both Monado Speed and Foresight can give you 90% evasion buff to the entire party. And nothing is going to hit me. So Jin's going to be attacking me the entire time while we're targeting Malos. And no attack he does is going to hit me at all. It is very, very ridiculous. So this fight could actually be a lot quicker if Monado Armor didn't exist. That reduces all damage by 80%. Not really a huge deal, though, because, like I said, I can't really be harmed anyway. Everything Malos and Jin are doing to me is just gonna do nothing. It is uh, a very, very strong ability to be able to just evade every single attack possible. Evasion's pretty broken in all three games, all three Xenoblade games, honestly. But it might be the, the worst in this case, just because you can really become unhittable. There are definitely some broken strategies in all the games, though, and that's one of the things I love about Xenoblade. Everything is just really, really broken overall. When he's level 4, I'm Malos here, because I got a good moment when he's toppled here. And this should be almost enough to just basically finish him off pretty quickly here. The Gamma Ray with Mithra combined will definitely be enough to finish him. So that's all we're going to do now. So, then I'm going to swap my target to Jin because he's pretty much dead at this point. And then we're going to combo Jin with a nice uh, fusion combo setup here as well. Or we're going to try to, anyway. Going to use Mithra's level 1, I'm going to use level 4 Gamma Ray, and then I'm going to use Taurus Ruinous Weather to finish this off. So. Going to get the Monado Buster here on the break. Going to get toppled. And this Ruinous Weather is going to be enough damage to finish him. And that is going to be a way to show off the Power Shulk. Great offensive, great defensive, great utility for the entire team. Great party support. Shulk really can do pretty much everything you need him to do. He may not be the greatest jack of all trades in a game where Cutie Pie and Corbin exist, but he is very serviceable and he has a lot of unique abilities that can be very, very powerful. Unlocking him might not be the easiest. You will have to beat Dino Drama. Well, outside of challenge or outside of um, challenge mode anyway, unlocking him in that sense. But if you can manage to get him, he can be a very powerful blade. Easily an A tier option, with a lot of very good things going for him. That's going to cover it for me, so I hope you guys learned something from watching this guide. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to boost that algorithm as much as you can. I do appreciate all the support for everything you've done for me, everyone. So with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Look forward to all of my future guides. I think we're going to do another character you might expect next. And that's going to be it. So have a great day, everyone.